There's been a lot of buzz around the community recently surrounding the Chinese or rather third party mouse market. Today, I'll be providing my experience with four of these mice. Then we'll look at who should consider buying a third party mouse. Then I'll give some other real life comparisons to help paint that picture. Let's start with the four mice I have from metkeys.com. I want to say a thank you to Helen at Metkeys for sending me the Hecate G3M Pro to review and another big thanks to my buddy Volta for sending me the Dharma Shark M3. Legend. Instead of doing an in-depth review of these mice, I'm only going to point out the things I like and dislike about them. And if I don't mention a feature that you're interested in, you can check the links to each mouse and their technical specifications in the description below for more details. The first observation I have of these mice is that they all have quite nice shapes. On screen, I have a graphic that ranks these mice in different grip styles. First place through to fourth place is the metric here. So the Zalpin Z1 Pro is a pretty standard egg shape, but it feels great in fingertip and a hybrid of fingertip and claw grip. It offers a lot of inner hand maneuverability, giving you good X and Y axis aim potential. The Dragonfly F1 Pro feels nice to me in relaxed and aggressive claw. It's also pretty nice in fingertip due to its overall medium slash small size. The Hecate G3M Pro feels like a taller but shorter in length version of the Dragonfly F1 Pro. The Hecate's hump pushes up slightly more into your palm and the overall shape profile feels very similar to the Dragonfly, just a bit taller. The Dragonfly and the Hecate G3M Pro have similar side profiles to the g -Wars HTX, which is a mouse I really enjoy using, except the third-party mice have slightly less emphasis on the comfort grooves offered by the HTX. And the third-party mice profiles are generally much taller. And then we have the Dharma Shark M3, which is the biggest mouse of the four. And for that reason, it's the only one I'd suggest palm grip is possible on. It feels a bit like my Vaxi XE in terms of size and feel. A relaxed and aggressive claw is achievable with the Dharma Shark. And I can also fingertip this mouse, but it doesn't feel like the intended grip for this mouse due to its size. Overall, the shapes are pretty good and in places more experimental than the mainstream options on the market. There are more subtleties to these mice and I find these companies push out revisions really quickly if they either strike gold or hit rock bottom with an experimental feature, which is quite refreshing in comparison to the mainstream market where most companies tend to play it quite safe. I'm approaching 1000 subscribers. Thank you so much for the support. Help a brother out a little bit further. Hit that like and subscribe button. I appreciate you big time amigo. Let's get back into the video. Let's talk about button feel and implementation. Again, I have graphics on screen to help visualize the whole picture while I talk through the specifics. In this visual, I'm using the first place to fourth place metric again. The Zao pin is my favorite of the four here overall. The only thing I wish to mention is that the clicks on mouse one and two feel a little heavy when compared to the other options on this list. The clicks are satisfying, just a little heavier or stiffer than I'm used to. The Dragonfly has some fairly extensive pre-travel on mouse one and two but the clicks are quite light and spammable regardless. The side buttons feel a bit rubbish to me. There's a mushy feeling you get when you press the side buttons, you get a bit of pre-travel and a lot of post-travel. In truth, they're actually fine, but I'd prefer a more dialed-in experience here. They're not my favorite implementation. The Hecate G3M Pro mouse one and two buttons are its main feature, and it's also my least favorite thing about this mouse. The Hecate has two modes. There's a silent switch mode, which really dampens the sound of the clicks. And there's a normal gaming mode, which is basically the normal experience you'd get with other mice. The issue I have with this is when you're in gaming mode, you get a lot of pre-travel and a bit of post-travel. When you're in silent mode, you get a ton of post-travel. Overall, the clicks are usable, but they're not ideal for me personally, feeling a little mushy compared to other options in this video. And the Darmo Shark has the loudest mouse one and two click of anything I've tried. It almost sounds like the mouse is shouting at you when you click. The clicks feel good to use, but I can hear them through my headset. And I don't like that level of noise either when I'm working or when I'm gaming. The scroll wheel actuation also feels a little less tactile than the other options on this list, but it's overall fine and actually better than some mainstream mice I've tried. Mouse four and five on the Darmo Shark is pretty much identical to the Dragonfly. It's a bit mushy, but I've ranked it lower than the Dragonfly due to the forward placement of the buttons. I would personally prefer a different placement for the side buttons, you know, a more standard middle of the mouse. 
And finally, let's talk about quality. I'm going to rank this set of questions out of 10, like one being bad, 10 being perfect. And I'm going to rank them against some of my other mainstream mice to provide maybe a more meaningful comparison. And while I'm aware that some people experience issues with all of these mice, I'm just building this list from my own experience. The only negative thing I have to say about the Zowie is the price. It's very expensive compared to the other mice on this list. And I'd say the same for the Vaxi, but not to the same degree. The Zalpin is really good overall in terms of quality. There's slight flexing in the shell, but it's not noticeable in actual use for me. It doesn't appear to be a coating either, but it feels slightly grippier than the others on this list somehow. And it's also cheap as chips. The Dragonfly is very good too. The click implementation lets it down slightly, but the lack of a coating is mitigated, in my opinion, by the grip tapes included in the box. Overall, it feels a little cheaper than the Zalpin in the hand, but it's still a great performer, especially for the price. The Hecate G3M Pro is really let down by its mouse one and two clicks, but overall, it offers innovative features through the silent switch mode, and it's also really cheap. It's also quite a nice shape. I think it's similar to the Razer Viper Mini. And finally, the Darmo Shark is a banger for the price. It has a bit of flex when you squeeze it, but nothing dramatic. And I just wish it wasn't so loud on the mouse one and two button presses. So to recap my summary, if you want one of these mice, I'd suggest the Zalpin is an easy recommendation for fingertip gamers. Really surprised me how good that mouse was for the price. The Dragonfly F1 Pro is my pick for aggressive and relaxed claw grippers. And the Dharma Shark is my pick for the palm grippers among you. With the review section out of the way, I want to talk about who these mice are perfect for. And there's a few considerations here. If you're operating on a budget and want to try a gaming mouse for the first time, or maybe you're new to PC gaming, I'd suggest a third party mouse market are a great place to start. You'll get a really good mouse for the price and this will allow you to start gaming at a lower price point. And don't forget, mice are first and foremost a tool to facilitate cursor input to your screen. Third party mice all achieve this function, regardless of how premium or not they are perceived to be. If you're looking for a mouse to buy for one of your children, maybe a teenager in the house who likes the game, you can spend much less in the third party mouse market and get something almost as good as the premium options. Or maybe you're just interested in trying out a new shape and don't necessarily want to spend more than hundred pounds on that purchase. And then my final thought on who these mice are perfect for is basically anyone who doesn't need the best of the best. Maybe the less competitive gamers, or those gamers that put less emphasis on their peripherals than us in the enthusiast community, because we are a special bunch after all. Those people will absolutely be able to game and have a good time on these third party mice. Now for my real world comparisons. So as a 17 year old in the UK, when I pass my driving test, I'm not going to buy a Porsche or a Bugatti as my first car, unless mummy and daddy are feeling generous. I'm much more likely to buy something that gets me safely to my destination at a fraction of the price without all the bells and whistles. Similarly, if I want a car to mess around with at the weekends, I might not buy the most expensive one I can afford. I might choose to buy two or three cheaper cars to help keep the driving experience fresh and exciting. This mouse enthusiast hobby is a funny one, but really it's no different to things like golf or any other hobby for that matter. We all like to promote the best of the best because it genuinely is great fun to explore new gear and try new things, but the most expensive peripherals are not essential for you to have a good time playing the games that you love. So if you don't have the budget for a mainstream, really premium mouse, do your research and buy a third party one and have fun with it. I personally don't play with my third party mice now that I've tested them, but I do have the best of the best mice also on my desk. And truthfully, I prefer the Zowie and the Vaxi to the Metkeys mice, but they have come at significant cost. So bear that in mind. Mech Keys have a great selection of mice on their website, which is also linked below. And I think I have an affiliate code with them too, maybe. So try code Logpile at checkout if you choose to buy one. All right, thanks for watching. Chat soon, bye bye.